Essen Game Fair is an annual four-day board game trade fair open to the public, and it's kind of a big deal. For four days, hundreds of new and innovative board games were showcased to nearly 150,000 excited attendees. Some of those new games being showcased included Hanabi, Love Letter, Seasons, Bora Bora, Avalon, Comet, Zulkin, Concordia, the list goes on. But the game that has brought us here today, which was released roughly a decade ago at Essen Spiel 2012, is none other than Terra Mystica. Sure, Terra Mystica was released in 2012 to the public, but you gotta go a little back in time to see the full history of it. Let's take it back 15 years, all the way back to 1998. Nineteen ninety eight was a bit of a crazy time, a lot of things happening. I mean the Winter Olympics held Japan, Google's created, France out here winning World Cups, what? Monica Lewinsky shenanigans with old buddy Bill Clinton. I mean I just turned one years old. The iMac just came out. And it just so happens that our main character for this story, Helge Ostertag, who is the designer of Terra Mystica, had just acquired one of those Macs. Helge played numerous games on it. Among them, Spaceward Ho. In this game, you had to terraform planets before you could inhabit them, which Helge loved. He took this terraforming mechanism to his brother, and they started designing a board game with it. The conception of this board game was originally called Gorod. Gorod translates to town or city in Russian. Gorod had terraforming, modular board, five fantasy races, all with unique abilities and terrains to accompany. There were three buildings, each yielding a different resource, workers, money, action cards. And as for the action cards and modular board, this was directly influenced from Settlers of Catan. Helga and his brother played it loads they were big fans and he's admitted in several interviews that it was a major influence after many tests with the fam and friends they decided to present the game at the international game inventors fair in munich they met the people at hans jaim gluck which is a german board game card game publisher who placed tested it for a while but ultimately decided to not publish it this rejection made the brothers abandon the game altogether for many years sad boy hours until 2002. Helge finally wiped away all the tears from his last rejection and began redesigning Gorod. Oh! The update is two races and landscape terrains are added. That's right, we're up to seven boys and girls and an additional playtesting to the number of buildings you can build and more modular board considerations. And also, if you couldn't tell, it's assumed around this time that Helge is on his own with Gorod, as Anselm, his brother, is not mentioned again in any blog or interview. Jump ahead to 2009, Helge sets out to finish Gorod. Races are doubled. We're up to 14. Alright, 2010. Not a lot changed design-wise, but an absolute monumental year for Helge and the 2B Terra Mystica progress. Why? Well, Huggy meets Uwe Rosenberg, and he's kind of a big deal. And he heavily influenced Helge positively, saying his board game will be published. And that's exactly what you want to hear from one of the most successful board game designers of all time. Here we've got a picture of young Helge playing Gorod in Spain, with Uwe and another person who I have no idea who they are. But check this out, there's some awesome easter eggs to be seen here. For starters, check out the 12 step cult board. I mean this would have single handedly changed so much of the game. I mean this is just crazy to think what, what could have been. Over here we got the faction board with odd looking buildings and a rather simple building tree, but nothing earth shattering. One last thing I'll point out is the score tracker on the perimeter. It goes all the way up to 69. Nice. And if you want to take a look at this old time capsule on your own time, I'll just leave a link somewhere in the description. 
All right, now back to the timeline. After he meets Uwe Rosenberg, he also meets Jens Drogmuller, who ultimately becomes the co-designer, and Frank Hureen, who becomes the publisher with Fjordland Spiel. Now, 2011, the game that was formerly called Gorod changes to Habitat and is changed again for the name that we know and all love, Terra Mystica. With its great new name, years of playtesting, revisions, redesigning, and balancing, it was ready to be released to 150,000 people at Spiel 2012. Spiel came and went, and Terra Mystica was a hit, winning the DSP, the Dutch Spiel Prize, the most prestigious and well-respected accolade of its kind. But the awards and recognition didn't stop there. Terra Mystica went on to win many other awards and stake their claim on many all-time ranking lists for years to come. Simply put, Helge and Jens had created a masterpiece. Now that Terra Mystica was out and all the reviewers and board game dedicated websites were raving about it, people wanted to play it. So if you lived in the right area, you might be able to find it at your local game store, or you might have just wound up placing an order online to get your own copy and play with some friends or family then. But if you couldn't do either of those, or you simply didn't want to wait for the shipping, or you just wanted to play more, there was one other way. Play by forum. Play by forum is exactly what it sounds like. People on a forum type their moves to play an entire game. This could be any game. Think chess. You can play the entire game of chess by just typing the moves, as long as you have the right connotation for every possible move. The first play by forum occurred on a little internet platform called BoardGameGeek.com. It was a five player game hosted by Kareem Co. First things first, Kareem set up some housekeeping, as he calls it, which is just labeling everything so you can type your moves. The hexes on the map are given hex locations, favor and town tiles labeled, actions are numbered, I mean everything is squared off. You have to. On to the game, first pick is Nomads, second pick is Orin, then Swarmlings, Alchemist, and finally Engineers. The game is hilariously riddled with blunders, strategical head scratchers, and realizations that someone should have paid eight, not six coins for the Nomad Stronghold four rounds too late. The game goes on for about six weeks and finishes as thus. The first Terra Mystica play by forum was a success, but something else was brewing. Whilst the game was being played, Juho was working on what he quoted, the smallest program that did anything useful related to a game. I'd enter moves into a text file and run the script to produce the final game state as a JSON. This JSON was rendered to HTML plus Canvas by some JavaScript code that was half ripped off from an old project. There was some minimal rules checking and automation and support for only 5 out of the 14 factions in the game. But by January of 2013, Juho did some more computer things that I don't really understand, but it all equated to the birth of Terra.Snellman.net. Snowman was very bare and archaic looking in the beginning, but it got the job done and allowed for some rather cool things, sat extraction being one of those cool things. April marked the first stat extraction of Terra Mystica with a sample size of 43 games. Juho goes on to quote, which isn't a lot for a game with 14 unique factions, and of course player ability is a huge factor in the outcome, but with those caveats, it's at least fun to look at how prejudices match up with reality, end quote. And he's not wrong, it was quite fun to take a look at these Snell stats. Not even six months after its release, and Terra Mystica has already had a few major community-based contributions. And I think it's time for yet another. Enter Load. Load had programmed an implementation of Terra Mystica in JavaScript. This allows playing a very fast game against AI opponents in your browser to try out different strategies and whatnot. For players not just trying to play the game for fun, but to get better, this was monumental in achieving those efforts. You no longer have to wait days or even weeks to try out new strategies after a game is finished, but rather an hour. Or just however long it takes you to play against three AI. I don't know, two AI, one AI. It's all you, bro. Moving along to June of 2013, Shut Up and Sit Down, a very popular YouTube channel, releases their review of Terra Mystica, and it becomes the most watched video on Terra Mystica to date. This is just massive for exposure. Fast forward to April 2014, a user by the name of Robin Z 
On one of Board Game Geek's forums floats the idea of a Terra Mystica online league using Snellman.net. Discussions ensue, polls are created, ideas are thrown around like paint on a Pollock painting. And come May 2014th, TM Tour is born. Shout out to Bjolitz for building the TM Tour website to help run yet another beautiful Terra-related function. If you aren't familiar with TM Tour, it's pretty simple. The tournament is free for anyone to join and is played in seasons that span over two months. It is organized in divisions and leagues and after each season, players who finish at the top of their leagues get promoted and players finishing at the bottom get relegated. In each league, all players participate in four games and will meet each player twice. The TM Tour is still running today after 47 seasons and is currently on its 48th season. Looking at the last 10 seasons of TM Tour, there are 10 different winners. Not a single person has won twice within those 10 seasons. But if we take a look at the first 10 seasons of TM Tour, there are just three people who won during that span. Jolitz with one win, Eonk with two wins, and Zivok with seven. Zivok dominated the early years of TM Tour. He was seemingly unstoppable and people marveled over his Terra skills and knowledge in forums for years. Or at least I know I did. And he became sort of a legend and a myth as he stopped playing around the 20th seasons of TM Tour. And he did this all with nine TM Tour Division 1 titles to his name, which is still to this day the most held by a single person. September 2014th, I've got a little flex here for you. Terra Mystica on BoardGameGeek.com reaches the number three all-time board game rank just ahead of Agricola, which was designed by none other than Uwe Rosenberg, who, if you remember, told Helge Terra Mystica would be published. Full circle, eh? October 2014. We are back at Essen Spiel, where Helge and Jens released Terra Mystica two years earlier, but this time they are here to release their first major expansion, Terra Mystica Fire and Ice. Fire and Ice has new maps, new factions, new ways to score, and better ways of balancing the game. Overall, incredible. Even with the base game being out for a couple years, people were still trying to figure out how to play all the factions and score well. The benchmark for a good game around this time was above 100 points. And there was seemingly so much left to be discovered and the learning curve of this game was just oh so daunting for new players. What the Terra Mystica community really needed was some help, some reference or guidance so that old and new players would instantly know how to play all these factions. And that's just what the community got in the late of 2014 from the Board Game Geek user Thrar. Thrar dropped his Terra Mystica guide on Board Game Geek, where it still sits as the fourth most upvoted post out of over 2,600 posts. His guide, Basic Guide to Terra Mystica, accomplished what it set out to do, give general but good advice on how to play the factions and overall game, ultimately leading to better scores in your games. I mean, I can definitely remember when my friends and I discovered this guide and everything changed for us. We went from roadside dumpster fire to incredibly slightly above average Terra players overnight. The guide is definitely outdated by today's meta, but at the time, top tier stuff. March 2015, things were about to get serious. Doc Cool begins his opening statistics for all factions. These were released one faction at a time, but they were some seriously good reads. They consisted of data extraction and analysis, five observations highlighting what's good and or bad, and one conclusion tying everything together in a neat little bow. These faction statistics became a focal point for opening strategies, and they remain relevant even in today's meta. 2015 marks the first Terra Mystica Mindsports Olympiad appearance. What is MSO? Well, straight from Wikipedia, it is an annual international multidiscipline competition and festival for games of mental skill and mind sports. The inaugural event was held in 1997 in London with a 100,000 euro prize fund and was described as possibly the biggest games festival ever held. So it's basically the Olympics for board games. And Terra made it. 2022 will mark the eighth time Terra has been played at MSO. Over the course of these past years, we have seen five different winners. 2015, the opening year, no surprise here, we just see a bunch of Englanders taking up the top three spots as it's the first year MSO was in England. But nonetheless, Bajan Mednajad takes home the gold. Jump to 2019, we got Italy's Marco Del Pra bringing home the gold. 2020, Germany's Mark Lembrecht wins it. And last year, 2021, Canada's Stephen Short brings home the gold. All impressive feats, well done guys, but what about 2016, 17, or 18? Well those years were all won by one dude, Zaytung Chong from Malaysia, TT Chong for short. 
Why didn't he win the other years? Well, pretty simple. He didn't play. He must have gotten bored. Game was too easy. Don't believe me? Well, aside from his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back MSO wins, just go to Snellman.net today and look at the ratings. He sits atop the list at the number one overall player, just barely ahead of Zivok, but he's miles ahead of everyone else. What a legend. To wrap up 2015, Helge and Jens bless us with yet another... It's a mini expansion, but an expansion at Spiel. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Landscapes expansion. The mini expansion is a compilation of old and new, well, mini expansion content. It included previously the released stuff, such as the bonus card shipping tile and four town tiles. But those were promos and this officially released everything. And it also included a special landscape tile for each faction, with the rules being determined by not only Helge, but the board game geek community. It's pretty cool. It also came with one more scoring tile to give more variety to the game. But of course, the new landscapes, the new town tiles, the shipping card, these all gave immense variety and, and a whole lot of new things to be discovered about this game. Not a whole lot of new things happened in 2016 for Terra, but I did find these haikus floating around. Okay, I lied. 2016 does have some new things going on. Check it out. We got this buddy old guy, Loon, here. He says, hey, anybody want to make a map? I got some ideas here. They play around with it, play test it, and boom, Loon Lakes is born. Now, around the same time, there's another guy who says, hey, I got a map. You guys want to guys wanna check it out? The difference is, is this guy, goes by the name of Jordan Lewis, goes through a rigorous amount of play testing talking around 2,500 games were play tested and eventually we get a map called Fjords. I'll go ahead and spell it out for you in case you missed it. Both the people who made their maps, their names are in it. Loon, Lakes, Fjords, Jord, Jord, Fjord, Jord, Jord. If you ask me, this app was a game changer. The art, 
the music, the super easy user interface, the hands-on tutorial. It was and is all still amazing. It had local play with some computers, or you could invite your friends to play in a private game, which is how I learned to play the game. Or if you're feeling a little crazy, you can try the asynchronous play with other people to test your skills. And yes, it's still popping today. I joined the queue for a game last week to see if anyone was still here, and I was put in a game in less than 20 minutes, and now we're somewhere in the third round of the game. Digitized, thank you. July of 2017 marks the first time WBC World Board Gaming Championships host Terra Mystica. WBC went on to host Terra Mystica for three years, but it hasn't returned since. That's not to say it won't, but yeah, it just hasn't. Now the re re now, the real reason I bring WBC up is because of a little blog that came from it, from Board Game Geeks user Rainier. Rainier set out to win Terra Mystica at WBC in 2018 and wrote about the experience along the way. And it's one of the most entertaining gaming reads out there. Now, I haven't read that many, but still, it's, it's quality. First, it goes to show that the administrators don't always know the best way to run events, and Rainier <laughs> expresses this quite hilariously. Second, it's just awesome to hear the strategies used and implemented in all the games, and finally, it's just got a nice heartwarming ending, so good read. October 2017, we're back at Essen. Good old Spiel Essen. Now, this isn't Terra Mystica, but it's basically Terra Mystica. If you haven't gotten enough already, Gaia Project is released. It's Terra Mystica in space. Twenty eighteen starts out hot with the Board Game Geek user Fruity Harris starting up a new Terra Mystica tournament, the Fire and Ice Ladder. Maybe it's not a tournament, it's a ladder. So what differentiates the Fire and Ice Ladder from the TM Tour per se? Well for one, the maps are randomized. That's cool. Oh, also, you're using the expansion rules, so you can use the extra final scoring, but also, hold on, the Fire and Ice Factions. What, what? The Fire and Ice Ladder is also just a continuous ladder. Like, it's not a tournament that ends. It just keeps going. Depending on where your position is on the ladder, that's who your opponents are in the game. Hey, bro, just trust me. The Fire and Ice Ladder it is dope. And if you don't believe me, you can just try it out yourself. It's still going on, even after over 100 weeks. And here's the overall leaderboard. These are some bad dudes, let me tell you. February 2018, Terra Mystica drops on BoardGameArena.com. Now words don't express just how big of a move this was, so I'll try and show you some numbers. If we look on BGA, Terra Mystica has over half of a million plays. For comparison, we'll look at Snellman's numbers. Here are all the two player games, which is above 30,000. And for three to five player games, we have almost 140,000. So if we combine both of those, you're looking at 170,000 plays for Snellman, which has been around for nine years, twice as long as BGA, and yet BGA has practically tripled the amount of plays than Snellman does. This is crazy. Crazy. The first dedicated Terra Mystica channel begins only Terra Mystica on YouTube. This was a pretty successful YouTube channel, got over a thousand views on all of its videos, ultimately surmising over 140,000 views. Videos range from the simple playthrough with every faction to the more complex deep dive into bonus card strategies or live games on BGA with the auction against expert players. At the end of the day, this channel was the first of its kind, and it was both appealing and entertaining to those who didn't want to read but also wanted to learn, so the video just helped immensely, especially for people like me who couldn't even read in the first place, so all you had to do was just open your eyes and enjoy the soothing voices of Goldbug from Only Terra Mystica. Terra Mystica is now also available on yukata.com. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I didn't know much before going into this research, and even after, I still know very little. I'm not sure how big of an impact this was, and when I went onto the website, it said there was two people online. So, I mean, maybe it was 320 players online, but but why would the two be in a parenthesis? I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Fast forward all the way to October of 2019, we're back at Essen, and we've got another major expansion. This time, Merchants. There's a whole lot of new things in this expansion. New boards, new buildings, new ways to score, new ways to get economy, 
new economy. I mean, there's just craziness going on. May 2020, Zorus publishes his first ultimate guide on YouTube for The Alchemist. And this was an absolutely revolutionary video. There were a lot of old ideas, but he made it accessible and very easy to understand for everyone. Before this video, the average Alchemist score was probably 120. After this video, the average score was probably 150. Everyone knew how to play Alchemist after this video. In May 2020, board game geek user FireX starts up another turn-based league, the Fjords League. It's a bit of a blend between the TM Tour and the Fire and Ice Ladder. It's a league, it's turn-based, but all factions are played, all scoring set up, and it's only on the Fjords map. I've got to mention this one just because it was so unique when I saw it at the time. It was a turn-based game video breakdown by Fruity Harris. I don't even know if that makes sense. But over the course of like a month, Fruity Harris would record his moves, break down what he was thinking about, and uh, it was just one of a kind game analysis. Um, yeah, go watch it. Sometime in June, rumor has it, Terramiska hit Discord. Tons of channels popping up, everybody just chit chatting away about. And with the help of Discord and BGA's growing community, in August 2020, Chris Bizzle launches Fire 2 Open. This name later changes to Fire 2 Tournaments, but it's all the same. These Terra Mystica tournaments are played live on BGA and live stream on Twitch.tv for anyone to watch. The oversimplified format for all these tournaments was a bracket. Win in advance, lose and you're out. The overall thrilling experience of these tournaments is accompanied with incredible production value from pre-game write-ups and predictions, amazing layouts to display the game, and expert commentators to break down the madness and beauty of these games. And above all, it's a showdown of the best players to have ever played the game. The top Snellman players came over to play. The top BGA players, they came to play. All these top players came to battle it out. It goes without saying, Fire 2 Tournaments has produced some magical games, some incredibly deep games. You just have to go and watch them. And if you haven't seen F2O yet, you really just have to experience it on your own. Like, go on YouTube, type in F2O, go watch a finals or a championship game, or the International Clash, which was a little different from the normal normal take, but at the end of the day, it's all awesome stuff. April 2021, Tiwan and Zorus announced the Terra Mystica Tuesday League, and I know what you're thinking. Another league? Are you serious? Well, hold on, not so fast. All the leagues prior to this have pretty much been turn-based Snellman leagues or ladders, which take months just to finish a few games. With the exception being MSO or WBC, which you'd have to fly to the location where it's held just to play, and that's only once a year, or the Fire 2 tournaments, but it's pretty tough to get in the tournament, and once you're in, good luck getting past the first round with its March Madness nature. So what's so special about this Tuesday league? Well, it's basically the TM Tour, but scheduled live games on Tuesday, and alternating hosts choose the week setup for the game. So there's a lot of variety and it's all done very fast. There's also a pecking order from top to bottom players and they are divided into different leagues with Premier League being the top. People are encouraged to and usually do stream their game so people can check in on the action. And all in all, it's just a grand time. After the second season, however, Zorus and Tiwan gave it up.
And just like that, Terra Mystica Tuesday League is back at it again thanks to the Terror Mystery Cats crew that's composed of EJ, Ghostly, and Super Zarny. Big thanks to you guys. The Terror Mystery Cats aren't done at the Terra Mystica Tuesday League. No, 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 no. In May of 2021, they go on to start Terra Mystica's first dedicated podcast, Fire 2 On Air. Okay, Craig's here. Super's here. EJ's How's it here. Going? Super. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, good, man. Really good. EJ is the host with Super Zarni co-hosting. In every episode, a new guest comes on to talk all things Terra Mystica. Topics range from winner's interviews to strategy dives to playing Terra Mystica as fast as possible. What? It's dope and a personal favorite of mine when it comes to getting my Terra Mystica fix. We're closing in on the present day and there's still an absolute bombshell to discuss. On January 25th, Furlan Spiel's board game editor, Bastian Winkelhaus, releases the first of 16 to be released fan factions on Board Game Geek. Over the course of the next seven weeks, Bastian released the remaining 15 factions. It is unclear if they will release fan factions for the Fire and Ice terrain, but it's in the works now if they will or won't per Bastion, so we'll just have to see. Initial thought, because these things just came out last month, I mean they're absolutely stunning, just look at these guys. On top of that, these fan factions create the element of fresh and new. The best part of Terra Mystica for me was learning everything, learning what every faction did, the cool nuances, the little intricacies, so these fan factions have already brought an element of discovery back to the game for me, even though I've been playing for five years had to cut the recording and get my pen and paper out to do some quick maths but yeah even after five years the board game community and the designers behind the game have been able to keep this game fresh for everyone involved i mean me the old players who have been around for even longer than i have the new players just coming into the game i mean it's awesome and with all that being said i'll just let these last final factions play out so here they are for you What up? Present day, baby. We made it. For me, it's April 22nd, 4.31 p.m. I don't know about you, but that's where Terra Mystica stands today. I know a lot of things I left out, like streaming, for instance. There's streamers everywhere streaming Terra Mystica, and it's cool. Shout out to all those guys who stream. I'll put them down below so they won't be left out. Yeah, not much of an outro here. I'm just going to wrap it up there because if I wait too long to edit this video, I mean, who knows? Next month, there's going to be something crazy I got to add and... There's a lot of editing behind that, so I don't want to have to do all that work. No, no, no. So we're just going to end it right here, right now.